Hi, good evening and hello to my talk about CLJ test containers here on Reclosure 2020. Uh, first up front, thank you very, very much for having me. I am really happy to be here and to be able to talk to you. And yeah, let's just um, jump right in. So um, the title of the talk is Dockerize Integration Tests with Test Containers. And um, before I get into that topic, I just want to spend one tiny little minute to talk about myself. So who am I to um, be here and talk to you this evening? Um, my name is Tim. I'm from Freiburg in Germany. I'm working with the JVM for more than 12 years now. I have been an IT consultant for the last seven years. I'm the co-founder of the Java user group in Mainz. And uh, recently I'm the founder of the company Lambda Schmiede GmbH um, here in Freiburg. So from January on, I'm self-employed and I'm really, really looking forward to that. And what's more about me to say is I like playing guitar, running, um, often with my dog, and um, um, my other hobby is uh, coffee. And you can find two links here. Um, on the left side, there's a QR code leading to my tw uh, Twitter account. And on the right side is the QR code le uh, leading to my personal website and blog. Okay. So what is the problem with integration tests? Why do we need to solve issues with integration tests? We have been doing integration tests for years now and everything worked fine, didn't it? And um, I believe that's only partially true. Because the big issue um, I'm having with integration tests and many other people are having is um, they depend on the things you want to integrate. So of course, if you want to test integration of a database, of a message queue, um, you need an instance of that service running wherever you're running your tests. So you need an instance of any of these. It can be um, something assumed simple like database, MySQL, Postgres, um, it can be a message queue like RabbitMQ or um, a streaming broker like Kafka. It can be a cache like Redis, or it can get even more complicated and you need to test um, integration of OAuth flows with, for example, Keycloak. And so wherever your integration tests run, you need access to those services. And where do your integration tests run? They run on the local Windows or local Mac or local Linux machines of your developers. They run maybe on your Linux build pipeline you have set up anywhere and maintain yourself. Or they're running in the cloud, GitLab, CircleCI, Travis CI, or GitHub Actions. And um, so I assume that you want your developers or you as a developer want to be able to run integration tests locally. So you need a local Oracle database. You need to install it on your machine and it needs to have um, the same parameters as all the other developers on all their machines. And um, maybe you can type line test to start a test run. And um, then your application connects to the database. And maybe you have a very sophisticated cleanup job. And after the tests are run, you have to clean the database again or beforehand and then your database model changes and you need to set up your local database again. But maybe last time your tests crashed and now everything is in a kind of strange state and you need to delete the database manually again. And yeah, that's a lot of hassle. And everything we're talking about here is only the simple use case databases. So um, I believe the fun begins if you need to set up a Kafka or even a key cloak locally um, everything on your machine. And um, this is no easy task. And um, luckily for us, some years ago, um, some people bothered, uh, were bothered by uh, these facts and they introduced test containers. Um, Test Containers is a Java library that supports JUnit tests, providing lightweight, throwaway instances of common databases, Selenium web browsers, or anything else that can run in a Docker container. So it is um, a Java library. Um, 
It has 4,400 stars on GitHub now, over 80 releases and is active since 2015. And um, this library has picked up a lot of traction lately. So um, many of the bigger frameworks started using test containers for their integration tests. You can find it if you're um, familiar with the Java world, you can find it in Spring Boot now in Spring. So they are testing their data integrations with test containers. Um, and it is really a great way to dockerize all the services you depend on. So you dockerize your Oracle um, database, your Postgres database, your Kafka broker, your Redis cache, everything that you uh, can run in Docker can be dockerized with that. And of course you were able to dockerize these services beforehand. So if you wanted these services to exist on the developer machines, you could always create Docker images for that. So write the files, Docker files manually uh, distribute them to the developers and uh, start them in your tests. But what is really great about test containers is that you don't have to do that. Um, you can just define these containers as code. So before we dive into how to use them with Clojure, I want to show you how to create a test container with Java code. So you would put this into your integration test and this example creates a Docker um, image with Postgres. So you are creating an instance of generic container with the Docker image Postgres and the label 12.2. You tell the Docker image uh, container to expose the port 5432, which is the default port for Docker, um, for Postgres. Um, you assign an environment variable Postgres password, which sets the password for the Postgres DB in the container and then you start the container and then you can get the container host and the container port from the resulting instance and use them to connect to a database and run your test code. Um, first um, there are two things that might seem strange first. So the host, why can't we just use localhost? Um, because it is not, sh we are not sure that the Docker host is our machine. We could connect to a remote Docker host, which will come handy in a build pipeline. So um, we connect from our machine, but uh, the machine executing and running Docker is somewhere else. So um, in our case, when I run it on my local machine, um, get host name always returns localhost, but um, on a circle CI pipeline it might not. Also, um, get mapped port. And we already told um, test containers that we want to expose the port 5432. Why can't we just use that? Because um, this is not how Docker is supposed to work. Um, test containers lets Docker assign a random port from your local machine to the port 5432 from the test containers instance. This makes sure that we don't have port collisions. And this is already a, um, a great advantage over running the Docker images or even installing Postgres on your local machine yourself, because you can create 20 Postgres instances in parallel in your tests, and each of them will get assigned a different port. And so you can parallelize your tests to the limit of your RAM and your machine's capabilities. So um, this is why we need to retrieve the host name and the port from the instance of generic container. And um, yeah, this helps us a lot already. So um, I believe you can start to see now, um, already see what advantages test containers bring us. Um, and it gets even handier. So. Um, Test containers offers a lot of pre-built containers. Um, in this example, it's the PostgreSQL container. And um, you see that we now get uh, methods with database name, with username, and with password, because the PostgreSQL container knows that it needs those to start. And even better, once we have started these instance, we can say 
postgres.getjdbc URL and get the formatted JDBC string to connect to that instance. And this is pretty neat. These specialized containers don't come um, along the default test containers library. Um, each of those is um, a unique library you need to pull into your class path. That's important to remember for the closure integration later. Okay, we have seen two simple examples on how to use um, PostgreSQL in Java and how can we use this in closure. So as it is a Java library, obviously we can use Java interop. So in this case, um, we can use a threading macro. We create a, a new instance of generic container, um, again, with the um, image name Postgres and the label 12.2. Um, we tell test containers to expose the port 5432 and we all um, set the environment variable and the password again. And then we start the container in a separate command. It's a new line of code. We start the container and then we can connect to the DB and again, retrieve the host name and the map part from the container. So this doesn't look too bad, right? Because um, test containers likes to use a builder API a Fluent API, so we can use uh, the thread macro. Um, and this is already readable pretty good. So um, why do we need a closure wrapper? Can, can't we just use that? And um, indeed, um, there are good reasons to just use the Java library and not use the closure wrapper, because you will always have access to the latest test containers version you will not have to wait for the maintainers of the closure wrapper to update. And there's already lots of documentation on how to use the Java API, which you can adapt for yourself. On the other hand, um, this is not very closure-y. For example, the start method returns void, and there are a lot of methods on the container that return void. So we can not use the thread macro um, everywhere. As you see here, um, start is a separate command. And start, um, yeah, mutates the container that we have um, in the lead um, without returning anything. So that's not very closure. -y. Also, we need to convert data types. You see it here again um, with exposed ports, accepts ex uh, only an array of integer. Um, there might be a more clever way to do that, but you can't just hand in a vector of integers. That doesn't work. And um, of course, you are having um, an instance of a Java object um, that you need to handle. So if you want to um, work with that, it's always Java interop. So um, I need test containers for a closure project I'm working on. And after some time, um, I got a little tired of the Java interop. So I decided, um, why not try and create a small wrapper? And this is what CLJ test containers is. Um, it's a lightweight wrapper around the test containers Java library. It has only 32 stars on GitHub, not 4,400, only three releases, and um, it's only active since six months. So it's um, a very small project. Um, and yeah, it's just, it's just a wrapper. Um, I am in contact with the maintainers of test containers itself and uh, talk to them about a closure integration. There is an official wrapper for Scala. And uh, this official wrapper for Scala is the reason why there won't be an official wrapper for closure. Because um, they ran into a lot of problems uh, maintaining a wrapper for a different language. Um, and they decided they do not want to do that and just recommend Java interop. So this library is unofficial. So let's see how to use the library. Um, we have um, imported um, or required everything as TC. So with TC create, we pass a map with an image name, the exposed ports, and uh, a map of environment variables. And then we call 
start with an exclamation mark because start mutates state, it uh, creates a Docker instance in the background. And this is definitely not side effect free. And then um, the create and the start functions return a map with all the important uh, attributes of the Docker container mapped. So we can access the key host and um, there's also a map mapped ports and we can um, get the port that is mapped to 5432 and again connect to EDB in our test. That's a really simple example. So yeah, it's time for some more advanced examples. Um, this is a more complex container. And here we create a container from the image Alpine 3.2. So it's just Linux with nothing installed. We expose the port 80 and set an environment variable magic number 42. Um, then we add this container to a network, which is somehow created with the function called create network. And uh, we assign an alias to that. So in this network, this in uh, image um, container, sorry, is known as API server. Then we add a wait strategy, um, which is called um, strategy health. So um, before we do anything, um, after starting this container, uh, we are waiting for the container to report itself healthy. There are def defined health checks in Docker and um, the start function will block until the image, until the container is calling itself healthy. So um, if there is some initialization, we can avoid running into race conditions. And we execute a command on startup. Um, we start a shell with a command while true, do echo magic number on port 80. So um, if we start this image and it ha um, has path passed the health check and we uh, perform an HTTP get on port 80, we will receive 42. And this is something we could test in an integration test. Another example would be mapping um, a class path resource from your um, closure project into the container. Um, so there's again um, uh, a function which mutates state of the container and uh, we pa pass in a resource path, test SQL, a container path, uh, opt test SQL. And um, upon creation, we will um, map the, class, uh, the um, resource from our class path to slash opt slash test SQL. Um, this could be used to uh, set up a database schema in Postgres, for example. And we specify a mode. This is read only, so the container is not able to manipulate that file. Another way to uh, add a file to your container is to bind a path from your file system to the container. So um, this would map every everything from the working directory I'm running the application from into slash opt, also read only. Um, and this can make sense, but remember in the beginning when I said that we want the tests to behave equally on all environments. So um, I would prefer mapping a class path resource into the container every time because this will behave um, the same way on all the environments and mapping something from the local file system might not. This is just a small warning. So how to write tests? Um, how do we integrate test containers in our closure tests? One way would be to use fixtures. So in um, your test namespace, you um, use the macro use fixtures. Once means um, for all the tests running in that namespace, please only execute this fixture once. Um, this is a function with parameter f. And then we create um, the test container. We start the test container. Um, then on the um, second line from the bottom, we execute f, which is all our test functions from the test namespace. And in the end, we stop the container and um, this, this will get shut down and removed from the local machine again. 
So we have um, everything what fixtures um, were planned to do. We have a test setup, we have test execution, and after that we have a cleanup and remove the Docker container again. Um, this is kind of nice, but even better, you don't have to care about cleaning up at all. Because um, the test container maintainers were um, also thinking of um, what if the JVM crashes during tests, then um, we may have a build server, a build pipeline, or um, yeah, a Jenkins server, build server, um, which just accumulates Docker images and they get created and created and created, but they never get removed. And this is why they made sure that when the JVM shuts down, the containers shut down too. There is a special container running in the background. It's called uh, Ryok. Um, I'm not really sh uh, familiar with mangas and animes, but I was told it's um, a reference to Death Note. And um, when the JVM starts spawning Docker containers, this Ryok service um, starts a keep alive ping to the JVM. And as long as the JVM um, responds, everything is fine. Uh, React doesn't do anything. And as soon as there is no response anymore, um, it starts removing all the Docker containers that were created by this test run. So you could just um, initialize a Docker container at mm, the head of your test namespace, or you create a, an additional file in your test resources that just creates the Docker image and starts the container. And after all the tests are run, the JVM is shut down and they are shut down along with it. So what's planned for the future for CLJ test containers? Currently, we are not feature complete yet. So there are some uh, wait strategies and some logging mechanisms that we can't use yet um, in the wrapper. You could use them in your tests anyway, because um, if we create a new container with create, uh, in the map that is returned, there's also the key container, which just um, gives you access to the test container Java object. So if there is something that uh, the library cannot do yet, but test container can, um, you can get to the test container object and execute all the functions and methods yourself. Um, what I'm cur currently working on is to provide a better support for the REPL. Um, because I just said it, um, all the um, leftover test container instances get cleaned up when the JVM shuts down. The problem is that a REPL session keeps the JVM alive. So um, last week I was just trying uh, to write some new integration tests in a REPL. And uh, after some time, I realized that I had 30 PostgreSQL instances running on my Mac, which um, explained why it became very, very slow. So um, I'm currently working on a function that you just can call from the REPL, which clears all the instances and uh, resets you to zero again. Um, and also uh, there's a task for improving the documentation. Um, currently, all the functions you can use are documented. We have um, an entry on CLJDoc, um, which you can uh, access and with a small tutorial how to use it. Um, but I believe documentation can always be improved and uh, that's something which is in the making. There are some interesting links um, here. Uh, don't worry, you don't have to type them all. I will share the presentation and then you can just click on it. So on the top, obviously, the most important one is the one to our GitHub repository. Um, the second link is to a blog entry um, where I write a little bit more and a little bit uh, in more detail about the motivation behind the wrapper. And the last one is to a YouTube video where I um, streamed on Twitch together with Kevin Wittek, one of the maintainers of Test Containers, and uh, basically showed him how the wrapper works and he comments on it and um, gives some good uh, insight into test containers. This uh, was very fun and I liked it a lot. So we're done. Um, 
thank you for watching and also um, a big thank you to the people who helped me write this library because um, there are five to six maintainers already um, some re uh, recurring maintainers who um, solved several features and suggested several features um, this is um, again a great sign how uh, approachable the closure community is and that people just drop in and say hi um, I would like this feature or um, this you could do better um, may I create a pull request for that um, and this is really great and really really helpful so thank you